guys are doing well. Thank you for joining me, Steve. Um, who else is in here? Mr. Campbell, thank you so much for joining me. Um, as you guys come in, do me a favor. If you can, hit the thumbs up for me. And um, what that does, it helps the algorithm. So I, I know you guys have heard that before, but yeah, if you can, just give me a thumbs up. Now, tonight, because I don't want to hold you guys long, I respect your time, it's Saturday night. We're going to talk about why you getting denied for credit. And this is very important because a lot of people um, go through this cycle when they get denied for credit or if they keep getting denied for credit, they don't know what to do or they get very frustrated on what to do. So we're going to do a Q&A session um, after this. Hi, thank you for joining me, Nancy. Th you kept your word to me. She uh, did that on my Facebook. Let me know she, that she was joining me tonight. So thank you, Nancy. I appreciate your, your time. And so when you're getting denied for credit, it really does lead to a lot of frustration. And if you're new to credit, sometimes you just don't know what is the problem. So we're going to go over some issues on why you're getting denied for credit and what's the steps to actually fix uh, you getting denied for credit. Now, number one, thank you for joining me, Kingdom Living. I really appreciate it. Um, number one, if you're getting denied for credit, I can just about guarantee your main problem is the lack of information, okay? And we're going to break that down. There is a lack of information on your part. If you're constantly, or even if you're getting denied for credit, there's a lack of information. And what do I mean about that? Number one, you shouldn't be applying for anything you just about don't know. You just better know I'm going to be approved for this. If you don't know you're going to be approved for this. You already are starting off wrong. You should not be aim just aimlessly just applying for credit. If you ain't doing your due diligence beforehand, then you're very misled and you're going to put yourself in the ditch. So what do I mean about that? Number one, you need to know your credit scores. You need to know what is on your credit before you apply for anything. And I mean, if you're applying for something the day of, you need access to your credit score and you need to know what your score is. And number two, you better know what the requirements of being approved for that is from the RIP. So what do you mean by the re requirements? Let's say you are going to buy a home. Many people want to do that. Number one, you need to know what's on your credit report. And so if you're looking to buy a home, you need to know the requirements at that time. That means you already called, you're calling a mortgage broker before they're pulling your credit. You're going to run down to them what's on your credit. You're going to say, hey, here, I want to get uh, a proof for a home. This is the home I'm looking to purchase or the price I'm looking to purchase. You should already know what you can afford. Okay. You should already know what you uh, can afford. You should already know how much debt you already have on your credit report. You need to know that. You, you have to know that. How much debt I already have. And you need to tell them, let me be transparent. These are the negatives. I have this going on, a late payment, maybe about six months ago. I got a collection for a medical bill. Maybe uh, that was five years ago. I have a charge off or I might have had a repo like five years ago in that time. You need to be transparent and let them know what your credit score is. You need to take it a step further and know what your mortgage, FICA 2, FICA uh, 4 credit scores is. And you need to supply them 
with that information before they pull your credit. Because this is why, and I'm just using this as an example. This is why. Many times they'll tell you, well, that's not going to fly. Or if you have that going on, that needs to be taken care of. Why would you even have them to pull and deny you if you don't know front, you can qualify? Why even create the hard inquiries? Because when you apply for a mortgage, they pull across the board and all three credit reports and they're going to take your middle score. That's not the lowest score, not the highest score, your mid score. If you don't know, like, cause people hit me up all the time. Oh my, you know, Equifax is not the same score as my Experian or my TransUnion. No, your scores are never really the same across the board. If, newsflash, if nobody told you that. There's going to always be a slight difference. They grade, they have their own internal way. Each bureau of grading and creating their credit score. So you need to talk to that mortgage broker and find out because lending, even in certain financial environments, like now, interest rates are going up for mortgages. So that means you're going to qualify for less because you're paying a higher interest rate than maybe two or three months ago. So things have changed. So you want to be exact. You want to know that once I apply for this, I am ready for approval or I should get approved. So when it comes to credit cards, when it comes to loans, it's Google out here. It's Google. All you got to do, because I'm amazed how lazy people are. Lazy. If I'm not telling them everything verbatim, they won't get up and just go. You ain't even got to get up. Turn that phone around. Go to Google and just look it up. So if you're looking to apply, let's say the Navy Fed credit card, the information is out there from who they pull from. So you should already know what's my TransUnion credit score, what negatives I have reporting on there, and what's my credit score. Another part, how much income do I have versus my debt? A lot of people are not doing the research. When you are applying for a credit card, some of them will already tell you in the application it is required of you to make this much income minimum. Sometimes if it's a subprime card, they might tell you straight up, if you're not making $1,500 a month, that is what's required to be able to get approved. So people don't even look into those details. You don't look a lot of people are not looking into the bank rules. And I might've said this before, you know, and uh, Steve said 400 to a thousand. Some of them, uh, that just tell you straight up, <laughs> you know, like how much they're looking for, for you to even be approved. Certain banks that tell you like Chase is a big one. Chase, I don't care if you've got an 850 credit score. If you have uh, six new accounts within two years, Wrap it up. It's an automatic denial. They're just not going to approve you. They're just not going to approve you. So you need to know this. A lot of people, for some people, it might be like, oh, you know, that's common sense. But you'll be surprised how many people are not prepared. They're just aimlessly. Thank you for joining me, Brandon. They're just aimlessly just, just hoping and praying I get approved for something. That's the same thing with an apartment, whatever you're dealing with, with credit, you need to do your deal, due diligence. If you're looking for an apartment or to rent a home, straight up ask them what's your, your requirements. Many of them will tell you, okay, um, we're looking for this much income, two to three times as much as monthly income. And they'll tell you if you have a car note or any bills, they're going to deduct from that income. That's just simple math for you to do. And then you can ask them, what is your, your, your credit score requirements looking like? Some of them will tell you, I don't care. 
about credit. We just want to make sure you don't have an eviction. And so you need to know that stuff. Like before, why, why even apply to get denied? Even if you like the place. But why create these hard inquiries if you don't have to? You know it's going to decrease your credit score. So you need to do your due diligence. So don't let anybody, I don't know, I will tell you right now, I don't agree with it. I don't care what nobody think on a uh, political stance. There is a socialist mindset that everybody's a victim. You know, everybody is not a victim. And uh, many a times, if you are a victim, you're a victim of your own bad decision making. <laughs> okay. I, I have done it myself. I was a victim of my own bad decision making processes. It's just, it is what it is. And you can't expect for somebody else to carry that. Okay. Because you're making bad decisions. You got to own up and take self-responsibility, get the knowledge and say, moving forward, I'm going to put these things in place. The second part, why people are getting denied. Many a times it's because of lack of savings. Let's just keep it real. Most of your credit problems that you have on your credit report and why are you being denied? Because you didn't have savings. You wouldn't have never been late. You wouldn't have never uh, charged off that account. You wouldn't have never got that collections if you had the savings in your account to pay for it. And somebody, oh, that's easy for you to say. No, 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 no. From the door, you always have to balance and have a budget. And from the rip, you need to be saving three months to six months of what it costs to maintain your household. And well, I'm, you know, in debt and this, this and that. And then, but how did you get in debt? You never had a budget. You have to have a budget. And if you only have $3,000 a month to work with, $2,000 a month, you got to live within that budget and you need to pre have a savings amount that you're doing every week. Now, I'm not telling you something I didn't do. This is how I started off. And actually a good friend of mine, um, when I was working at Ford, he told me, he said, listen, and I'll tell you the same thing. You need two accounts. You need a checking account. You need, need a savings account. And you should have a set amount out of your paycheck before you pay bills or touch anything that goes in that savings account. And you need to balance your checkbook. You need to know how much needs to go into that checking account. And then you need to have some a little bit over. So from there, if you're doing that discipline and you're having a savings budget, that's going to limit you from charging all these things off. Because a lot of people just think when I talk about credit cards, getting credit cards, and I'll have some people that uh, uh, come, oh, you're teaching people how to get in debt. Who? Who? <laughs> Who? Apparently, you just flip-flopped your behind on this channel, okay? Because I ain't never, ever, ever, ever told you to get in debt just to buy a bunch of useless stuff. I always said you need to build credit to be able to leverage that to gain assets. So when I'm telling you, now, and then another one, hold on, let me, let me get this together. Cause see these same folks talking that I guarantee you don't own much. Okay. Don't own much. Number one, you got to learn how to take your credit and get credit cards. This is what they judge you in the credit system. Where are you getting this from? I know a woman in particular that she's old school, always saved, you know, um, had a daycare business, great saver, great saver, um, uh, was living in, well, was living with her mother. She was taking care of her mother. Okay. And so they was in the mother's home. Okay. And it was time she saw a home in the neighborhood. She had a, uh, a, a significant amount of savings and what the house was going into 
foreclosure. So she was going to purchase it. Okay. She's going to purchase it. And she had um, a, a nice amount of cash, but not all of the cash to cover it. But what she found out is what it was being bidded for or the amount that was from for for the home that she uh, that was owed that it was going to foreclosure she needed to make up the gap she didn't want to uh, spend all of her money she didn't have any charge offs any collections she's always dealt with cash but what happened was she didn't have enough cash or capital she didn't want to be broke to purchase that home so she went to see if she can get a bank loan in order to make up the rest, she can show that she have a large amount to actually purchase this home. I mean, to, to put as a down payment. And to her surprise, she, she was denied because she had no credit. So when you're constantly working in cash, all these people that tell you, well, you got a credit card. You need a credit card to have a credit score. Like, where, what are you talking about? You have to do some borrowing because... To your surprise, I guess you haven't got the memo yet. The credit system isn't for you. It's for the banks to judge your credit worth. It's going to handcuffs. This is why you got to learn how to work the system. You haven't understood that utilization is the second biggest part for a reason. Debt to available credit. If you have no available credit, no credit cards, you look like a risk. It's all about data points. It's all about monitoring you on how you borrow and how you pay back. It's to judge you. So where, how are you going to get that 30% if you don't have credit cards? And matter of fact, even if you have one credit card and it, put it like this, not all 800 credit scores or 725 credit score, scores are the same is is based they look at your profile and what's reporting if you only have one credit card you're or two or three you're still a risky profile they want to see you manage five and more at this this is why mix of credit matters at 10 percent. they want to see how you manage different types of accounts so you need to learn how to be strategic in order to do that. So she couldn't get that home. Be and she had the cash. She can show if she saved, she was responsible. But you got to know what to put on that credit profile and how to build. So you look responsible. And that leads me to number three. Some of y'all getting denied because what you got on your credit report. Everything is not the same. Those self builder credit cards, I mean self builder accounts and uh putting self, you don't think lending institutions, no that's not like a serious installment loan. They understand that. That and you oh, but my score went up. Baby, there's some people with a strong 680 credit score that can get approved for a lot more than a person with a 750, 780, depending on what's on that credit profile. That, you know, all, all scores ain't the same. Certain things do matter. And so what you say, well, Sherry, what does that have to do with me being denied? This, it, it has to. If you got a thin profile, just like I said, not enough managing enough credit cards you can be denied great example certain when people are going into business credit and many a times you have to start off by personal guaranteeing or pg if your profile don't have at least a a primary not authorized user account yada 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 or some self builder account if you don't have a credit card of $5,000 and up, they ain't rocking with you. So the person, you might have an 800 credit score, but you don't have, you got baby little credit cards. You ain't getting that. The dude that might even have 
the 670 with that on his credit profile is going to get that way before you. So you got to not only doing that, you got to know how to build. You got to know not to put a lot of uh, just crap. So I want, I want you to think about this. If you're looking, remember, these people don't see you. They know they don't see you in the physical. They don't get to have a conversation with you. You're a nice person or I like their personality. They're looking at you on paper. So if you're 50 years old and all you got on that profile is car loans, car loans, car loans, car loans, car loans, all of that, everybody can you get it? Please hit the um thumbs up. Thank you, Steve, for reminding them. If you have nothing but car loans and you 50 years old or you got a short history you 50 years old with a 20 year old length of history credit history then what they're looking at is somebody that's not stable another thing is why you need to remove a lot of those um addresses you know just going here to there you don't look stable uh, being a person that don't have a mortgage account on your credit profile, you don't look stable. So these things do matter. So a person that actually have a home and I see I'm going to read your questions like with Lexus Nexus. What a lot of y'all don't understand. If you own a home and you get your Lexus Nexus report, you know what they got? They got the value of your home. They got how much? You took out for that loan and then they said got the value of the home. Why is that important? The reason why that's important because banks know who you got an asset. If you don't pay me, I got something to come and get. So it makes a difference. They know I have something to leverage. I can put a lien on. I can take them to court. I got something to go after, but if you constantly, it just looks like a certain pattern. It, it just, you just don't look responsible. And somebody said, how do I remove addresses? You dispute them off of your credit report. You just, uh, you always just send a letter into the credit bureaus, send it certified mail, show your current address, have your, um, copy of your social security card, a utility bill, and you work from there. Another thing, don't be so quick to remove. If you had a long term job, like and you, you now you move to a different job. Sometimes it's best to report that same job you had. It makes you look stable that you've been on that job for 10 years. Or you've been on that job for seven years. It looks far more responsible than a person constantly switching jobs. So you want to remember your credit profile. You want to know how to dress your profile up. How to set yourself up. Because all of that uh, instability, what's reporting on there, like self accounts. They Come on, they know that uh, this is why I don't like secure credit cards. Uh, now, Navy Fed, uh, Discover, those that convert is cool because they're going to convert. But when you, and don't think the, remember, now they even know you're authorized users. They put that on your credit before they didn't do that. But now they put it on your credit profile. You look at there and you're authorized user. It says authorized users. They know when it's a card is a secure card. If somebody have to take money from you in order to lend to you, you look like you're on trainer wheels. You don't look responsible. If I, for me to, to extend you $200 worth of credit, you had to give me $200, you don't look stable. And this is how you know. When you have a secured credit card or those that did have secured credit cards, guess what they did? They simply went on and everything you got in the mail was about secure credit cards. That's what you were getting those offers. So you need to pay attention to what you're being offered in the mail. If all you're getting in the mail is subprime 
credit cards, that's because you have subprime credit cards. That's the only the offers they're going to give you. You're not going to see if you have subprime credit cards, uh, Amex coming to you, Chase application uh, or pre-approval uh, coming to you because they already know what category you're in. Remember, the bureaus are paid to market. They just gather your information and they sell it. That's that's all they do. They collect data to sell it back to the banks because the banks have all these types of products. They got secured credit cards. They, so they need a customer be, base to send those offers to. So they identify you. And this is why you continually get those kind of offers. So another part of not being denied. You need to sign up for Factor Trust and you need to opt in, not opt out. So opt in pre-screen. You want to opt in, okay? And so when you're getting those offers in the mail, generally that's where they're getting them from. So if you're getting a credit card offer, right, in the mail, pre-approval, like, hey, apply for this credit card, go to the bottom and look. It'll say if you want to opt out from TransUnion or it might Equifax, it'll tell you where they're pulling and what category you're in. So if they're sending you all subprime, you know you need to start changing that because if you then try to go to, um, let's say, American Express and apply for their card, they'll look at that and say, oh, you're just not ready yet. You're not in our category. OK, so you need to know and you uh, another that's another part of people being denied. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. OK, so if you subprime right now, don't just go. I'm I'm going to get a black card. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I want this. You can want that, but you got to make sure you work your way up to those top tier cards. Maybe the next step you need to aim for is a Discover card. Try to get somewhere. Um, you know, I really I'm not a big fan of uh, uh, Capital One, but at least they have multi tier cards that you can work with. And so maybe, you know, if you did the Quicksilver, you might try to move up to the venture or you try to work up into those higher tier cards and then you cross that bridge over to the top tier cards. So you want to work your way up because if you shoot too quick and you're not in that category and that tier, that would get you denied. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. Another part, focusing on income. So you might need to increase your income because like I said, if you have too much debt, but you don't have enough income, then you might not qualify because, and you might, might, might be making great income, but you got way too much debt. So you need to report or you need to be able to have more income. So um, remember, if you are Ubering, doing all of that, now you've got more income that you could put down on paper, okay? So you want to put more income on paper, but you don't want to lie about that income that you're putting down. You want to be able to prove it, okay? So you want to be able to show that, that you're making because you don't want to get a card and it gets shut down, okay? But you need to work on that income category. So let's take, for example, a lot of people want to buy a home. They might make great income, but student loans, depending on if they're a professional, doctors, lawyers, you had to go for a degree and it took you some time and you got a number of student loans, that's going to work against you when you're going for a home loan. So if you can show outside or additional income, now you can qualify for more. Now, it's certain ways that that has to be established. And that's going back to finding out what the requirements is, asking questions. So if you're looking for a home, uh, it's factor. Did you say factor? No, factor trust. 
So it's factor trust. And um, so you want to make sure that you focus on that income category, but you want to ask the right questions to that mortgage broker. So if you're trying to build or make extra income, you need to ask them. Now, if I have extra income, what can I like? What do I have to show to qualify for? So a lot of uh, times if you're self-employed, they want to see, depending on what type of loan you're going for, many a times to count their income, they might want you to be doing that for two years. And that needs to be reported on your tax returns or um, they want to see some kind of evidence. And generally, that's your tax returns. Now, it might be different ways that you can show that. You might need to establish a LLC. And then your LLC might need to start paying you pay stubs. You know what I'm saying? That could be a way of doing that. So those are tips on why, how to handle getting denied. Uh, denied. Why are you getting denied? But here's a real key. If you get denied, one of the best things that can come out of that is they always have to send you a letter on why they denied you. Okay. You need to pay attention to those denial letters because it's going to give you a picture on why you're being denied. They are going to tell you, Hey, this is the reason why I'm getting denied. Oh, somebody said it looks blurry. Okay, it could be my light is really, really bright. Um, It could be the reason why you're being denied. It could be it's something that they're telling you and highlighting personally to you. They could say um, it is you got too many hard inquiries. They might say, um, not only do you have hard inquiries, too much debt, too many recently open accounts. So you want to pay attention to what they're saying. Now, if it's too many recent open accounts, you have to just do some gardening. So one of the tips on how to fix that, if you going to go and apply for credit cards, you might want to do it all at one time. And what I'm not saying being ill prepared, but if you're going to apply for cards, you want to do it all in that one time frame, like maybe one or two days apart. So now when you start to garden, say if you even have to let a year go by, two years go by, or let's say a year, and then you, the next year you do, you pull or apply for credit cards at the same time. When that second year come back around, both of those hard inquiries or your hard inquiries all are going to fall off in one month. OK, in that same month. So you're clearing out hard inquiries. OK, and you try to do it at the same time. OK, and not not all through the year. Now, <laughs> you're not not just all through the year. You need to just do your applying in that month or in those couple of days so when it falls off it falls off at the same time plus you need to be very strategic what i just said about too many new accounts you want to make sure that you're strategic about what you're applying applying for and you need to be patient so if you're trying to build credit okay say you have to start because I'm subprime. I have to start in the subprime category. Okay. Well, you get one subprime card and then you might have to let that report. And then later on, you let that sit. And then maybe six months later, or even let's say you get that subprime card next month, let it report. Then, cause you're in the credit building process. Then maybe you look for because now your score should go up, especially if you're under a 700 credit score. You need to let that report. Then you go and look for maybe uh, a store card with the Visa logo, one that you can apply for from. Subprime mean you uh, a subprime is you're not 
uh, a prime credit card. So subprime is a lower credit score tier. That's generally if you're 620 and below and you those credit cards like First Premier, Credit One Bank, those are subprime cards. OK, they're they tend to have a very high interest rate and high annual fees if you got a high interest rate a high annual fee thank you for joining me in you got you a subprime credit card okay so it's uh exclusively like as a credit building card okay so if you have to start there then you might want to move to a merchandise or a store co-branded card like with the visa i think walgreens have one uh places like uh i don't like walmart so much it's capital one so it could be easy approval i just don't like capital one pull all your credit scores across the i mean credit uh reports across the board i i just don't like that but if you can find one synchrony bank committee bank then a lot of the times it will be a uh, easier approval and a little more generous with the credit line than doing certain subprime credit. JC Penney's is a good one. Macy's is another one. Macy's um, have an American Express version, so you can do some of those things. Thank you, and if y'all can just hit the like, uh, the like button for me. Thank you, and for reminding everyone. So then you might make that your next move. And maybe one more if you're trying to get your score up and then start looking for more bank cards like a discover card, uh, depending on where your score is and what's reporting. Now, discover doesn't like collections. So um, you're going to find Chase doesn't like collections, American Express. So while you're in that time of getting those subprime cards. And then move into that store card that give you time to deal with those as at the same time, those credit issues that you have. OK, so try that. that. So these are some of the steps. Number one, educate yourself. If you're being denied, there's some information that you don't have, whether what your credit score is currently, what your credit issues is. The information you don't have is where you applying, what their requirements was. You should know that, what credit bureau they're pulling from. And what is their just application requirements, such as income, uh, credit history. Are they uh, collections friendly? Are they not collection friendly? Because like I said, Discover is not collection friendly. Not if you're not getting a secured card. You know, other places are not collection friendly okay another piece of information is signing up for pre opt out opt out pre-screen but you want to opt in factor trust because a lot of these companies what they'll do is send you advertisements in the mail pre-approvals and why that's great because the company is fishing for your profile so if you get that offer it's a good chance that you can get approved so you want to do pre-approvals okay even some of the cards most of the cards i present on my channel is soft pull pre-approvals you want to go that route if you're getting the pre-approval offer in the mail that's a good sign that you fit now is it guaranteed no but at least you're not applying for people that is not or banks that is not checking for you. So let them suit you. Let they let them. It's like a, a, a woman, a man. Let him come and talk to you. Uh, it's nothing worse than trying to talk to a man that is not interested. You are not in what he's looking for category. You're going to have a problem. OK, so you want to always work that way gentlemen the same thing you want women or you want to go after women that is interested in you if not you're going to have a tough time tough road so it's the same thing that you want to you want to do get those pre-approved offers you want to look for cards that they give you that soft pull pre-approval discover do that 
American Express offered that. Um, who else? Uh, 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 Capital One offered that. And even a lot of the subprime credit cards, I think Credit One Bank, they'll, they'll let you do a soft pool pre-approval and they'll tell you, hey, you know, these are the cards you need to aim for. You know, Navy Fed have their um, soft pull prequal. Hey, and then so you're not just applying in the dark. You're not shooting for things that you're not, you know, what they're looking for in what they're looking on your credit profile. Then you want to have savings. If you're not having savings, that's your issue. Most people are charging things on a credit card. My rule of thumb, if I don't have three times the savings, then I'm not going to apply for that or I'm not going to put that on my credit card. I don't care if I'm going on vacation. I don't care what I'm doing. Even now with vehicles, if I at least don't have two times the savings to pay off that car, Sherry's not doing it. OK, I'm not doing it. That's just going. I used to just keep that for my credit card. I never had credit card debt or, you know, defaulting on credit card debt. I never had that problem because that's my rule of thumb. Three times. If I don't have three times of what I'm charging. So whenever I want to pay that off, it's not a problem. I'm doing that now for me, myself with vehicles. If not saying I won't finance a vehicle, some people are hardcore. They're not going to finance a vehicle. But I'm like this, if that vehicle interest rate is decent and you're going to use that vehicle to make money, it to me, I just don't see why you would pay cash. Why would you give up your working capital? That's my point of view. Not, and I'm not talking about a car. I'm just trying to look good for the streets, you know, because it's this is my summer this year. I did that. And that'll get you broke, busted, and disgusted real quick. If you're take using that vehicle and it's going to make you income and that income can go to pay off that car or if you're in the trucking business, why would you, I feel like, put all that capital out there? You need working capital. So um, that's another part of it. Knowing when I'm getting credit cards, when I where people are like, what's the big deal about big getting big lines of credit cards? The big deal is for those who actually don't do it to buy a bunch of garbage. The rest of us do it to make money if we need to. Okay, that's that's my thing. I'm a landlord. So instead of having somebody go and um, me taking out a loan or paying the cash out of my pocket, if I got a credit card with a low interest rate, I'm going to throw it on here. And then as my tenants pay me, I pay off my credit card because I'm not really paying for it anyway. I never... I'll be honest, newsflash, I never paid a mortgage. I'm 40, 43. I ain't never paid a mortgage in my life. I don't know how people do it. Somebody else got to pay my mortgage. I just, I just wasn't going to do it. So that's me. Somebody else, I got an income producing property to pay the mortgage over here. That's what I'm doing. I don't pay for my own stuff. I never did. Because this is chess, not checkers. I ain't nobody fool. Nothing wrong with paying your mortgage instead of paying rent. At least you doing equity. That's a great list. Listen, that's better than nothing. That's at least that's the basic move. If we're going to start, that's pushing the pine. You know, hey, at least let's at least do that. But for me, optimal is not to pay my my mortgage at all and let somebody else pay my mortgage and the mortgage on that property. And I put I save my money. That's what I like to do. I put my money. I have savings. So I like to be comfortable. That's that's me. So that's my rule of thumb. Savings, you know, have, make 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 moves. Another thing, if you got savings, if you got better yet cash flow, then go ahead. Buy what you want. I'm not against. I'm like from that Rob. Um, Robert Kikasop. That's where I started with my multifamily at 19. No, I was 21, 21, single mother. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm going to build equity and let somebody else pay for my, my rent. If when I bought my, my cars, you know, uh, I like the BMW X5. I just, it just was always, 
good car to me. You know, um, when I buy my cars, something else going to pay for it. Here, I either I got to get something to pay for it. So you can buy whatever you want. Like he said, just have something else pay for it. You shouldn't be paying for it. You shouldn't be having active income to pay for that. You, 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 you really shouldn't. It should be something established paying for that. So I had properties. So that's how I treated myself. Once I finally got that, okay, well, this is going and the income for that is to pay for this car. Pay my car note. That's the way I did it. Okay. So if you constantly, as in chess, they said, protect your peace. If you along, you protecting that peace, any move you make is protected. You more, most likely are going to win the game or at least if that peace get attacked, you can recoup. So you want to be able to recoup. So it's always good to have cash flow. But that's going to be that's going to keep you from being denied and out of that credit uh, problem. Another thing you'll find out. The more savings you got, the more cash flow you have, the less dependent you are on credit. You'll have you credit not as a necessity. It will be a game plan because. When, well, and what's the big deal with these credit lines? And I love I like Dave Ramsey. I believe everybody listen to Dave Ramsey. He starts like uh, it's a great foundation for most people. What Dave Ramsey is teaching is going to cure a lot of people's problem. But the only thing I could like somebody might not agree with everything is what he's talking about with credit cards. You need credit cards because he'll say, oh, you know, get in, in debt, but yet and still tell you for your long term uh, retirement to invest in Wall Street in different stocks. They work on debt. That's why they they go into to the market. What are they, that's why they selling the stocks. They they're borrowing from shareholders. That that's what they doing. They working off of debt. They don't work off cash. You you go to Walmart and all of them. They they not working off cash. They not make money off of cash. Where, where you think? I mean, even the big buildings that you live in, apartment buildings, huge ones, they not working off of cash. They borrow that money and they leverage to make income. So to me, that's kind of, it, it, it's, it, it's kind of nonsense to a certain extent to add that. you Because businesses are going to borrow. They don't use their own capital most of the time in order to, to run that business they use lines of credit so why aren't you using credit and leveraging that to make you money so i use my credit to get an asset income producing asset i didn't go out and just get a home from the rip that i was going to live and i it, it was another bill i understood i had to build equity you know so i let that i let my credit Get me an asset. So this is why I'm teaching all this. This is what the point of credit lines to get a bunch of liabilities. You know, it should be a plan and process. But let me look at y'all questions. Um, and let's let's see what y'all have. Some questions you have to ask. I really appreciate y'all joining me. I hope that was helpful of a breakdown, you guys. Let me go all the way to the top. Okay, already responded okay thank you nancy thank you King kingdom living for coming in i appreciate your faithfulness for joining me thank you so much renee thank you for being in the house connie thank you you always joining me i appreciate you coming in and tj how uh how do you get an accurate fico scores that's a good question um Sometimes the kind of FICO score that that lender have is more detailed and you would never have their exact FICO score. But what you can do is when I was saying about having the information, if you're looking at a company, find out what FICO score model that you can use. OK, that they're using to qualify you. And there's different ways that you can look at that. 
um, you know, there's my FICO, you know, experience, or you can go to that credit bureau itself and find out what your FICO score is. But you want to keep in mind when you um, say FICO scores, they like different lenders do use different models. So now it's also the FICO 10 and it's FICO 10, 10 T where it's trending. So they're looking at now if a banking institution is using a FICO 10, they're looking at um, your how much debt you've been carrying on uh in the last two years last 24 months like on your credit card debt looking do you pay it off or do you constantly have that credit card debt month to month and do it trend downward so what they are trying to do is stop people who get loans to pay off their credit cards so they're going to look at then that loan and uh what is debt going up in that 24 month did you take a loan and pay off your credit cards because now you got this debt and which way is your debt going up or is your debt going down especially it's not mortgage though debt they not, they're really not looking at that but the trending is like credit card debt and secured or i mean unsecured loan debt so in order for you to understand which accurate fico score if you're going to apply for anything you need to look at what kind of score model that company is using of FICO. So, um, like I said, Experian, Equifax, you can go directly to them, my FICO, but you need to know with that company, what you're applying for. The most common is FICO 8 and FICO 9. But what you want to need to look at, do they have scorecards? Because some of them have them for credit cards. Some of them have for auto loans. Uh, for cars, so you might want to know what kind of model they look uh, are looking for if you're applying and that's how you're going to get an accurate FICO score. You want to know what model they're using for mortgages is FICO 2, FICO 4. So that's how you can get the accurate score and know what to look for. So if you are trying to find an accurate score, FICO score, score, if you're going for a home, Google it and see who offered the FICO 4, FICO, um, FICO 2, FICO 4. I know Experian, if you pay a little extra, they show you your mortgage scores. If that's what you're looking for and they show you your auto score and all of that and your uh, credit card, bank card scores. So hopefully that's helpful. Steve said, I'm getting a loan. Oh, no, I'm getting approved. But the limit is from 4 to 100 regardless. I'm taking it. I'm going to spend. Okay. And so if you're in the credit building process, yes, you can do that. But what you want to do, Steve, like I said, work, especially synchrony and community bank. If you get a subprime card to start off, go and find those kind of um, car, car, I mean, not Walgreens. What's it? Is it? It's Walgreens that have a Visa logo are certain cards with committee uh, synchrony, and then you can work those credit lines to go higher. So with those companies, you might every six months, if you get a smaller limit, if you're maintaining your credit well, you don't have anything new that make sure you ask for a credit line increase on those cards. Maybe use them a little bit and then you start moving up the limits of your credit cards. And some of them will push those limits up uh, further. And TJ said, I have my credit reports. Okay, great. Uh, C says, setting up auto pay, keeping it moving. Great, great job. Um, oh, let's see, any more questions? Oh, thank you, Miss Cox, for joining me. I really appreciate you coming in. Brandon, um, Sherry, uh, did you get rid of the hacker? No, these hackers are are relentless they like flies child uh please make sure anybody that's saying whatsapp uh whatever i ain't using no whatsapp i could barely use my cell phone uh correct so make sure anybody whatsapp email address don't respond to them you should automatically know that ain't that ain't me 
but click on the photo and see if the subscriber base matches the subscriber base on each channel. If not, that's the scammer. So watch out for these scammers. And Nancy said, yep, Chase have the um, 524 rule. And Connie said, Sherry, I'd like to know if four to five years ago with Capital One, if they still put in two or three dollars of interest each month, is that hurting me? on my face score so uh i have smart guys. so capital one is it a charge off let me know uh connie is that a charge off or what is it is it a current credit card um let me know thank you for joining me lamont brandon thank you so much i'm glad the information can help elizabeth say hello sherry you have charge my oh change my life thank you for all the exceptional advice going into such extensive detail thank you so much miss white i really appreciate you joining me thank you for uh the positive feedback i really appreciate it well said live within that b word budget the budget you're right and uh I, i'm telling people budgets are very important Thank you so much, Siren Head, Tony. Love your work. Such a fan. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate each and every one of you. Oh, Miss Williams, thank you for joining me tonight. You've been giving me support for years. I really appreciate it. Kingdom Living said, build credit to leverage credit. Thank you. Yes, that's absolutely right. Connie said, just would like to share. I got a prime, uh, okay, a subprime through credit one. And yes, they charge $77 a uh, dollars from the jump, but learning from the utilization, I figured uh, it would take it out automatically that it, no, no, sometimes they don't with credit one bank. But if you're starting off there, Connie, anybody else that have to start off there, don't worry about it. You just don't want it if you can, um, Use that as a stepping stone and don't try to get a lot. I think I told y'all last week, another good option, I'm going to do a video on it, is extra debit card. They'll give you a line of credit, but it will be um, uh, dictated on what's in your savings account. So that can be a way without you uh, really getting uh, caught up in those you know, annual fees and high interest rates to start to build your credit. So check them out. And Siren, the head Tony said that that happened to me last year, blew 10,000 because I was denied, okay, in apartments and I didn't know how to fix my credit. I'm sorry to hear about what happened uh, with, and even with apartments, they gotta let you know uh, many a times, if it's a credit issue, why you was denied. So always don't look at those denials as a negative thing. Look, uh, get those denials and see what you're being denied for and see if you can fix it. Okay. How reliable is trade line supply? I never heard of trade line supply, but you want to be very careful with buying trade lines because it's only on your credit temporarily. And it depends on what you're trying to do because that for homes and stuff like that, that that stuff don't work anymore. You know, um, like I said, now they can see your authorized user. If you're trying to do that for qualifying for business credit, that's that's not going to work for a home. So it depends on what you're trying to do it for. Maybe to get a car, you know, that might work or maybe an apartment that might work. But um uh, most of this stuff, you know, is not working like that anymore. And is it worth the amount that they're charging? Okay, so be careful. Going through utilization, the card. So I just used $2. Um, it was only a 27%, but used, but used, I paid $50 next week and got the card paid down. I don't need the money. I just need the probably the utilization. And one thing 
you, you won't have to worry about too much of a utilization problem if you guys learn what's called the company, find out what's the uh, due date, the payment date, and the report end date. So you want to make sure you pay the card before the card report to the credit bureaus. So you could ride that utilization, but I'm not saying everybody. You can charge that card all the way up as long as you pay it before it report, then your utilization is down. So um, that's, that's how you can use it if you need to. Just always know what is the report date and what is the last day you have to pay before it reports. All right. Um, if you have a collection, is it best to pay them off? No. If Go to my channel. I have a whole breakdown on collections, third-party collections. Unless it's a student loan, you have to pay those back because they're protected by Congress, uh, unfortunately. But any other collection, is, if it's a third-party collection, especially if it's from medical debt or um, just consumer debt, they bought that and it's very hard for them to prove that. You need to send a debt validation letter to them. They need to prove they got a legal right to collect on that debt. So that's what you need to do is send that to them so they can prove whether they bought it, if they got a legal right to collect. So make sure you go and check out those videos on my YouTube channel because that's very deep on um, my explanation on that. Uh, management, thank you for the knowledge because I would not have known without knowledge. We have no car loans, except etc. And we make good money, just mistakes in the last four years. And not a problem because the one good thing, hey, that credit don't last always. At least after seven years, a lot of this stuff will fall off. Um, if you have your Lexus Nexus block, can you still do the shopping cart trick? Yes, that's a good question. Um, Myra, uh, me, uh, what is, is Mira? Mira S. Great question. Yes, this is why you do factor trust because that's what they use for the shopping cart trick a lot and opt in, opt out pre-screen. You want to opt in, but factor trust. So yes, that you can still do that. And... Any other questions? Thank you, Chris. He said, thanks for the great information. Thank you, guys. Thank you also, everyone. Miss Williams, Nancy, um, telling everybody to hit the like button. Renee, I believe I answered your question on how to remove addresses. Um, anybody else? I called them and disputed my addresses, and they were deleted. Okay, you are one probably in a few million because now they don't want to remove those addresses they be wanting proof and this is the reason why with those addresses if you open that account at an address and it charge off um what's see in that collection uh charge off is the address that you was when you open that account and so many a times that's why they don't want to remove it because when you dispute it it kind of see everybody has somebody in the United States with your name. So how they identify that that's your account is by personal identifiers. And some of them is old addresses. And if you look at Equifax, they like to keep a ton. Uh, even when you was in elementary school, addresses way back in the day, because they do that for that reason. Um, Connie said, we just had a timeshare that is almost paid for. We're trying to buy our first home with no bills or any other regular bills. All right, congratulations. Let me know how how you make out with that, with your home purchase. Wanda said, can we open an account if I ask, okay, can I open account close if I ask hard inquiry to be removed? Uh, I'm thinking if you saying, it, will they close an account? If you ask for a hard inquiry, yes, yeah, sometimes if you deny the hard inquiry, they will they consider it as fraud and they'll close the whole account. So you want to be careful with that. And so thanks to the N Navy Federal membership video Sherry has on her channel, I became a member of Navy Federal. Thank, trust me, it works. Thank you so much for your testimonial. I really appreciate that. Um... 
Zen said, I just got approved for the Capital One Platinum card today. Congratulations on your approval. Miss Williams, Sherry's always dropping knowledge. Thank you so much. And Nancy said, nope, don't go chasing them waterfalls. Thank you, guys. Anybody else have? Okay, and Connie said, we have plenty of income and no debt, but the past of uh, credit four years plus just had trying to rebuild which he had he was just approved for capital one small but it's going to start and that's great connie if you can um if you have a relative somebody with good credit that can make you an authorized user that can help also with that uh trouble credit history because you can add on their positive payments to your uh credit profile can you delete a bankruptcy with Lexus Nexus being blocked? Well, you want to um, really get the access to your uh, Nexus Lexus account uh, credit report and see if it's on there and you want to dispute it there first before you dispute anything off of your um, credit bureau with the uh, three major credit bureaus because that's where they're getting the public information from is from Nexus Lexus so you want to look at that to see if on your Lexus Nexus is it reporting that um, bankruptcy so remove it there first okay um thank you Tony for joining me I appreciate you Tony O'Neill I mean Tony Neal Tony Neal and thank you for joining me infinite hoops thank you for coming in and anonymous thank you uh anybody else yeah uh nancy said yeah capital one pulls all three reports i hate that god i hate that i really hate that because everybody else only pulled from one so they making a hard inquiry pull across the board i cannot stand that and steve said yep i applied for the Marshall store card, Amazon, they want a part. Okay, great. Amazon is a good place to start too to get approved. And Lamar, how do you feel about the Spire and Indigo pre-approval card? They're trying, um, trying to build credit. Yeah, if you're trying to build credit, um, look at the interest rates though. I'm not quite sure off the top of my head of their interest rate. An annual fee but if you're starting it for one subprime card yeah because sometimes you just need to live you know you want to rent a car and i'm not saying um it's the best way you can go but if you need the options of having a, a bank card sometimes you have to go through some subprime options to get to where you're going so it's just knowing how to build um I just want to make sure anybody else. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. I appreciate you, Kathy. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. And, okay, Chris said, I have three Capital One cards, Quicksilver, Platinum, and the Walmart Rewards. What should be my next upper tier card? My current um, experience score is 659. Um... Do you have any charge offs? Anything negative? Because if you don't have a charge off, I'll try Discover as the next stepping stone. Or depending on the time that you have that card, I, I would go with Discover as my next step stepping stone. That's what I would do. What are your favorite business credit cards? Um, I have a couple of. I mean, with me, I'm a Navy Fed head. So for me, I will go with. Navy Fed, I, I try to build with them a lot. But FMBO is a good one. Business credit card. But if you ha have a Navy Fed account, I get credit cards on the business side for them. Because only three on your personal side. But you can get business credit cards even with Navy Fed. If you start a business account, uh, you can do that even in your own name. But what you can do is in your own name, then go into the IRS and get a EIN number. And then you can put apply for those cards under your EIN number with your own name. So with me, myself personally, 
that card I recommend. Um, and like I said, I deal heavy with Navy Fed. They done gave me, even on my business side, you know, the PPP loan. Um, they have given me a couple of rounds of PPP and, uh, and forgiveness. So I try to do all my business banking with them, but that's one I would recommend. And like I said, going through Navy Fed, because they're really good. Uh, for me, they've been a really good bank that's been really generous and I didn't have to put a lot there. So, um, that's a good option. Uh, Hey Sherry, there are charge offs two of them from capital one uh if you got two charge offs i forgot your question earlier oh, okay you said um i can remind me of your question uh earlier you saying two charge offs from capital one and um i i, I forgot what, what what was the question if you can if you can um remind me again as i'm reading just put it in real quick now I know it's two charge offs. Instead, Chase sent me a settlement offer for 10% of the balance of the charge off. I want to pay it, but how will this um, report on my credit report? See if you can negotiate to see if you can settle it as paid as agreed. If you don't, it'll be a report as a paid charge off and it would initially be negative. But uh, as time go by, at least it's paid off. So um, that's the, but you want to always, if you're going to pay it, do it as paid as agreed. See if you can negotiate if they'll remove it. Uh, SHB, hi Sherry, good information always. How long will a charge off keep reporting on your credit report? It'll be for seven years, for seven years in general. All right, seven years. Stacy, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you like the information. I'm glad that it's very helpful to you guys. Uh, Mr. W uh, Wolf Wood said, "In your opinion, how long should a car? Uh, how, sh how long should a car loan be? I'm planning to get an auto loan through Navy Federal to buy a Highlander. It depends on how long, how much you can put down uh, on that car loan." You know, um, generally, you don't want to finance it as long, as, you know, a short time as possible. You need to see how much the total cost for financing that car. And um, so I guess that's relative. But the longer, the more interest uh, interest you're going to put down. And it all dictate on what you want to pay in a car payment and what you're using it for. Um, I mean, I'm not... I mean, God honest truth, I'm not a big advocate for cars because it's a depreciating item. And so, like I said, me, myself, personally, um, I don't, my car is paid for and I'm not planning on getting another car. So, um, now I'm not planning on it. So that's just me, myself, personally. So, um, uh, the truck is 45,000. I, I, you know, it just depends on your down payment. You know, that's going to dictate how long you're going to pay it off. And if it's new or used, you know, a new car have less. And it depends on your credit. Um, like I said, if you ask my opinion, I just, I'm not a big car advocate. That's just me. My husband, it drives him crazy. I don't, I don't I'm not a, a, I'm not a car advocate. That's just me, me, myself, personally. So, um. That's, I just told y'all my philosophy. If I don't have at least two times of that, like almost like 90 grand sitting in the bank, I'm not buying a car. That's just me. I'm not financing. I'm not, I'm not buying it. Uh, I'm not doing it. So that's, that's my opinion. You know, now I, I, I can, I can finance a pretty nice car now by my standard, what I'm telling you, but I'm still not doing it. I just see it's a way better way. I got to pay for a vehicle that's decent than put my money, especially right now with um, the COVID, everything is higher. So you're paying an inflated value for a car that's generally not even worth, worth that. So I don't, uh, to me, it's a waste of money. I can have that money to work for me. So that's just my opinion. 
So, I mean, if you ask me, unless you have about 90 grand in the bank, wouldn't do it at all. I wouldn't be paying for it. And then if you do have that, then you have a significant amount to put down. Because we're talking about credit and how to keep your credit good. And so that's that's my rule of thumb. And that and I'm not lying to you. That's what I, I live by. So that's that's just my opinion. Sherry, my twin sister just got a chapter seven finalized last year. Any suggestions on credit cards to start over for her? Probably credit one bank. That they'll they'll prove for um for a chapter chapter 13 and chapter 7 so she can start with a credit one bank card she can get approved especially if she's been maintaining her credit i paid off two accounts but uh they show paid with the zero balance these charge uh these charge offs also show as a collection on my so you pay oh it's show, uh, uh, on your credit report. How can I get these? You need to dispute that. Um, dispute those charge offs. Not charge offs. Dispute those collections because if it's connected to that, and you need to write that in that these accounts showed are are showed as paid. So uh, how is this a collection? Because it's pay is saying that you paid it. And it's a zero balance. So you need to dispute it with all three credit bureaus and highlight that. Then they need to remove it. Can a third party collector on a car loan, can a third party collect? Yes, they can. Um, uh, if you got a car loan, you somewhere got some paperwork, but you should send a um, debt validation letter. But yeah, they can. You got to be very careful with that. Two with statue of limitations. I got a, uh, a video about breaking down the details. I don't want to go deep in debt with that. There's other markers too with a repo of uh, paperwork you should uh, ask for. And I got a repo package because there's certain responsibilities when they repo that card. They should have sent you a notice giving you an opportunity to get that card back. When they did finally take it to the auction, they should have gave you, um, sent you a certified letter in writing, having you to ha have an opportunity to come to the auction and uh, letting you know what, when they auctioned that car off, what was the balance that was left over that was owed, how much they auctioned the car for, and what was the balance amount owed. So I would dispute in all of that. So with my repo package, I have a letter designed for that. But go to my video because I don't want to get in all certain certain subjects is really a whole rabbit hole by itself. Collections, charge offs. So I'm just going to give you guys general information. But that's what you need to do. Um, only thing about cars, there is a contract somewhere that you sign. So you need that contract to see if legal right was given to them to sell that debt to a third party. Did you agree to that? So read your um, original loan papers also. Steve said, is it better to pay down my Navy Fed credit card or show money in my uh, checking account? Thank you. Um, I would pay down my card because that's affecting your credit score. Yeah. So truth seeker, okay, you got time out. Okay, um, but yeah, if you got high debt or you got a balance, it's, it's affecting your credit score. So I would pay down my um, car. I mean, I would pay that down if, if you don't have money somewhere else from your Navy, but I would pay that down. I'll pay that down. What are the criteria to join Navy Fed? I have a whole video on backdoor ways to get in Navy Fed. Make sure, Shawnee, uh, you check that out. I have a Navy Fed business to build relationship. Uh, they don't report on business credit. I'm open another account for that. All right. Uh, congratulations on that. 
I have one 30 day late payment with overstock. Can I get that taken off? I called them. I had a co. Oh, you had COVID. Um, I, uh, what you can do is dispute it with the credit bureaus if they haven't did that, taking it off, or if you can't get it overturned, I will call them and speak to a supervisor and let them know you had COVID and see. If not, you have to dispute it with the credit bureaus. But um, generally, um, anything over two years of a late payment, don't bring down your credit score. Okay, Connie said, does it still hurt my credit to Capital One charge-offs charging two to three dollars? It has been, I think, five years closed and the charge-offs is gone through. Um, I, what you do is if it's with a collection agency, you want to send a, um, a debt validation letter. Um, yeah, but anything that's a charge off two or three dollars or whatever it is, um, it's, on, it's a charge off on your credit report. So you want to dispute it or you, if it's with a collection agency, send a debt validation letter. And in those debt validation letters I have, it asks about interest and things like that, if they can prove that. So that's something they would have to prove. We are like you, our cars are paid for. We don't own anything anymore trying to build credit. We need to purchase that smart credit through you. Okay, I, but you know, um, it sounds like you guys is on a good path and what you wanna do is make sure you focus on building credit and it's, especially if you're getting ho a home, if anybody's looking to get a home, the last thing you wanna do is get a new car because that, um, reduce how much you can qualify. So you want to be uh, very cautious about adding debt, especially if you want to qualify for a home. Um, Antonia said, I had paid all my debts about seven months ago. I have been receiving credit card car, car loans. I'm looking for a car. What's the best advice? Not to buy a car. Anytime y'all ask me not to get a car, <laughs> not to get a car loan, it's a depreciating item. Not, I'm not, not to get a car loan. So anybody that asks me about a car loan, don't get one. And that's, that's just going to be my best advice. If, uh, unless, because if you don't have certain things in place, if you don't have a savings two times of what, I, I'll tell you like this. If you're looking for a vehicle, have two times as much savings as that new car, just in case you get in trouble, you can pay it off. So if that car is $30,000 brand new, you need 60 grand sitting in that bank. I bet you, I bet y'all, if y'all start using that as a rule of thumb, it's going to automatically adjust what kind of car you can afford. So if you're a person that only have 20 grand in the bank saved, all you can afford is a $10,000 car. And I guarantee you, you're never getting credit, credit trouble if you start living your life like, like that. And that's why I'm saying savings because savings is going to keep you out of trouble. Savings is going and it's going to control what we said number two on this list budget so that's that's my best advice cars you don't want it's a depreciating item you ain't building wealth you ain't building a darn thing as soon as you drive it off the lot baby it's worth it just dropped 10 to fifteen thousand dollars in value that's why you have to get gap insurance because i used to be an insurance agency agent people will drive that car off the lot then get that gap insurance, not more than two weeks or a month, car total, and they surprise when that insurance check ain't covering how much it's valued for, how much you owe on that loan, because it depreciates in value, so it's just not a good investment. And I'm amazed by people say, I got a car loan, and my car 
is upside down. Your car loan is going to always be upside down. Your car loan ain't a home. See, when people saying upside down, that's not a home. A home, you mean, might be upside down because the loan I took out on a home, the value, the home value did not over appreciate or it dropped. But cars are always going to be upside down because it depreciates. That's what that's why it's not good to invest in them. They're not an investment. Unless it's generating you income and not working like, oh, I'm going to work. And it's, you know, it's not a significant amount of income. It's just not a good investment. Get you something you can pay for cash and keep it pushing. That's just going to always be. That's just that's just going to always be my answer. So anybody want to know oh, about a car? Unless you got two times sitting there in the bank. Whatever you got in that bank, two times as much, then that's that's what you're going to pay for. If I only got $6,000 worth, of, well, you need a $3,000 car. There you go. And you ain't going to never get in no, no credit problems. I guarantee. In time get hard, pay that bad boy off. Mm, I'm done. So you won't have any problems just because it's all about the budget. Hi, Sherry. I sent my debt letters three weeks ago to a collection agency they sent me back a bill only showing the attached bill with no proof they have a right to collect on the debt what now if you got my package i got a second letter where i i answer that that a bill is just not so you just automatically send that second letter you know, a bill is not proof that they have a legal right to collect on a debt. So that second letter go into that um, explanation that a bill itself, because if I show up with your electric bill and tell you to pay me, where does that show my legal right to collect? You're not getting any direct service from me. So you want to send that second letter that states that a bill is not proof. You know, that because the debt is old, don't mean any Joe Schmo got a legal right to collect on the debt. Y'all might have a car note right now. I just can't show up with the bill <laughs> to GM or Ford Finance and say, hey, yeah, now look at this bill, pay me. Well, that don't got your name on it. This said Ford Finance. So what? where does that connect that I owe you? So that's that's what you want to do. Beware, Credit One does charge $75 and it happened. Yeah, a lot of those cars is going to always have, if you have a subprime card, high annual fees. So beware of that. LC Nancy, okay. What's your credit score when you got Navy Fed a uh, business credit card? Great, great question. What about a lease? A lease is horrible. For me, leases is horrible. Um, uh, they they worse than fa financing leases because that mileage a uh, lease is nothing but a, a trap. And all they're going to do is get you to roll it over if you're going over that mileage. I'm just not a, a car. I mean, like I said, either way you slice it for me, you can find a better investment than a car. I, I just, that's me. I, like I said, if you want a new car, have double the money in the bank or at least something that you're not act, actively working. Create something you're not actively working. Like you're not physically going out there and putting your time and energy to work to generate you income. Find something that'll pay for it. A business that you purchase, something that you're making money in your sleep. Uh, I sell books on Amazon, stuff like that. That's that's not, I'm not working. I make that product one time and it generate me income. Then if that's generating enough income for you to pay for that car note, have at it. But that's going to always be my my thing. Buy you a, 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 a real estate property and... Has some tenants and let that pay for that. It's going to pay its mortgage, pay the utilities, and you got extra over to pay for that with. I guarantee you, if you do that every time, 
you're going to end up being a wealthy person. You're going to be good if you use those standards in life. You ain't going to never um, be on here, talk about credit problems again. The reason why most people are is because they're not using the standard I'm talking about. And that's why you are where you are. If you're not budgeting and you ain't making income that you ain't constantly actively working for, that some kind of passive income, then you're going to have a problem because you bound to get sick. It's going to come a day where you can't work. You might get laid off and you need other streams of income and you need passive income somewhere down the road. All of this should be aiming for some passive income or building wealth, some kind of equity. If you do that standard, you're going to be good. I have a collection from five years ago. If I dispute, it will now make my original charge off appear more. Cur no, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't do that. If they do do that, if you dispute it and they update it, it should not um, be updating the date. Then that's called reaging and that's a violation. So if they are reaging your debt, changing the date, the last payment date then you need to dispute that. That's a violation. And then if they don't remove it, if they have that going on, then you file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, and you can just upload that. Um, you can go online. My credit was just cleared to buy a house. Now all these... Cra yes, yes, champ beats. Listen to that. Because what they got is called a trigger list. The bureaus are not your friends. They sell information. And when you, they see that pull for a mortgage, they start blasting your name to everybody. Every John, Dick, and Harry just come and start slapping stuff on your credit report. Yes, that's absolute. And so it show you the bureaus are not your friends. So this is why it's important not to use your, and you, you notice they're going to fight you, champ. You see, when you start going for real assets, oh, they're going to fight you for them assets. That car, that, you know, uh, getting that car loan, ain't nobody popping up out the woodwork. They love for you to get in that because they want you to be a mule. They, oh, they, they, oh, nobody, crickets. But when you start going for real assets, buying a home, honey, they coming to prevent you to get your hands on the real stuff. So you want to pay attention to that. The one thing about credit, if you're wise, a lot of people, oh, I don't know how to get, because you never knew how to leverage credit to get your hands in a better position. That's what you, because you never understood that. You only put your hands on garbage. If you have been a person that leveraged credit to either start a business or to either get assets, you notice all you have to do is show a small amount of income Say for a home, 50000 a year, if you don't got a ton of debt, then they take that 50000 times it by three. You qualify for a home for 150000 Depending on where you at in the United States, you can get your home. So just by showing I make 50000 with a little money saved in the bank, you could get your hands on an asset three times. But most people not doing that. They buying garbage. And then they get mad at me. Oh, you teaching people how to get in debt. No, baby. Everybody ain't broke. Always remember that. That's another thing. Other people in struggle always think that everybody's struggling. Everybody ain't broke. Everybody don't have bad habits. Stop. Stop projecting your issues on everybody else. Well, what about the people that can't afford it? It's a lot of people that can because a lot of the same folk that you talking about got Prada, Gucci, a car, a new car. It's with tax season. How many plates around your hood or in the hood do you see new tags? People got money. Don't get it twisted. It's what they doing with their money. Look at their feet. Boy, I went to court. I went to court. I had a ticket in North, New Jersey. Went to court. The brother said to the judge, he ain't got no money. I kid you not, homeboy 
had looked fresh to death. I don't know what all he got on, but I noticed he had on phones. And my nephew wear him some phones, and I know they're going for about $200 and better. He had on some phones, and he had a bunch of cell phones in his hand, like a stack like this. And sitting up there, excuse me, <coughs> sitting up there and uh, acting like he ain't had no money to pay. He, <coughs> he, <coughs> give me, <coughs> he ain't have no money to pay. No money. He's saying, I have no money, but he got a stack of cell phones. So people have money to what they want to put money in. So trust and believe. A lot of these people, oh, what are you using credit for? Don't let them, you talking about that? Don't let these people, don't pay these people no mind. Because these are the same people with a victim mindset. They believe the whole world owed them something. Everybody else. Because you don't want to get your life together. You want to play Struggle Olympics. You know, a lot of these people love Struggle Olympics. Well, you think your struggle is bad? Here's my struggle, trying to beat each other's struggle. And your struggle, most of the times, is your fault why you in that struggle. You made bad decisions. So they ain't on the rest of us that you making bad decisions. I'm a landlord, and Lord God, that bike got the struggle Olympics. Let me tell you what had happened. Really? But they got a whole man sitting up there with no job and want to feed me a hard luck story. Especially when I was a single mom. I'm not going to take care of you and your man. That's just not happening. But let me tell you what happened. I know what is happening is a grown man sitting up there and you constantly won't be late on my money. And it just ain't going to happen. Because I ain't going to let that person take money out of my kid's mouth. I don't let my problems become your problems. So a lot of people are going to play this struggle Olympics. They're going to act like they can't afford nothing. But... They the first ones you seeing on the gram on vacation. They the first one on the gram with the tight joints on or all white up in the club. And you like, now this person always broke, but they always in the club popping bottles. They always looking fresh to death, but they going to swear everybody can't afford everything. You can afford exactly what you want to. So don't, you got to watch too the company that you keep. If you see it's a lot of them people. On your timeline, honey, it's time to change your circle. That's a problem. Because let me tell you, sorry to say, and I promise you, if you associate with people with bad credit, nine times out of ten, baby, you won't have bad credit. Because as Apostle Paul said, corrupt conversation will distort good habits. Let me say it again. Corrupt conversation distorts good habits so if you're around people who got bad spending habits if you're not careful then bad spending habits and you being around the mentality that kind of mentality will come in on you okay if you in the rain i don't care if you got an umbrella you out there long enough something on you gonna get wet so you want to slide to the left like the cha 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 slide slide to the left Slide to the right. You want to slide away. Okay. Because as the 48 laws of power say, you got to be aware of infectors. There's some people just like Pigpen got all that thing from uh, Charlie Brown going around on him. It looks like a world. It'll get on you if you're not careful. Okay. So thank you, Miss Lady T for joining me. Why is it so hard to get late payments? Oh, it's really not hard to get late payments. It's which ones you're trying to aim for. So if you're looking for late payments, your best strategy, the older it gets, the easier it is to get off. And you don't want to try to dispute a ton. You want to dispute one. You know, so you, you want to attack that one at a time. So some of this stuff look reasonable. So the um, when it comes down, especially the credit cards, certain lenders, they only keep that hard, uh, hard documentation for a certain period of time. So the older, the better. So you want to just go for the oldest late payment on your credit. Okay, Sherry, what, what, uh, that is what Capital One is doing to me on disputed Capital One. They're still stating to put 
to put three, two or three dollars like it's stating back on a new report. The date is changed. Okay, well, you need to dispute that. Then, like I said, if they're change, changing the date and they're updating the date like it's um, a new um, or it's like uh, 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 it's called reaging the account. So really, they should just be reporting it from the time the, from your last payment. And sometimes they do that when you dispute the item. Sometimes they'll try to get slick and um, update the date of, uh, of last payment. So you got the date of last payment. So if you see that they're changing that date, you need to go ahead and dispute it for um, re-aging. Because that's a way so they can keep that on your credit report longer. And that's a violation. If they continue to do it, then put a complaint with the Consumer Financial Credit Bureau. Okay? Uh, consumer Financial... Uh, yeah, c Consumer Financial... Uh, can, not credit. Consumer Financial... Yeah, c Consumer Financial uh, Credit Bureau. So the F, the CF... BA. Yeah, it's Consumer Financial Credit. Uh, is it Consumer Financial? The Consumer Financial Credit Bureau. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just dispute. They oversee them, and that's what you want to dispute. Uh, you want to send your complaint. I've never been late on Navy Fed credit card member for two years. Limit 4000 Well, you want to pay down your utilization. I mean, anytime you got high utilization, it's just a no-brainer. Pay it down. If you don't, you just look like a credit risk. So you got to pay down your utilization. Either way you slice it. Um, and, you know, so. Yeah, so you just want to pay down your utilization. If you don't have the money to pay it down, then you should be doing something to get get the money. Do, you know, it's nothing wrong, you guys. If y'all don't have the money, Uber Eats. We got stuff out here that I'm showing uh, inspection business, it's nothing wrong with you taking your time to generate that money, to pay down your bills. And you need to focus on that, to, to do some kind of activity, to dedicate it, to pay it down or reduce your spending. Uh, maybe cancel a couple of subscriptions, stop eating out, do something to pay it down. And one thing I have learned and I have had Sometimes I have my utilization up. Um, start every paycheck. Start before you spend. Be you'll be surprised. Sometimes it don't never look like it's enough. Every paycheck, if you get paid every week, every two weeks, make sure you start paying what you can. Let's say if you make a certain amount, fifty dollars out of your paycheck, immediately when it hit, pay put it pay that Navy Fed card down. Put it on that Navy card, Navy Fed card. So if you can do that and you're getting paid every week, you look up, you done put like $400 down, well, $200 down on that card. You put in $200 down and then I will make the minimum payment if I can along with it. And once you start doing that, you'll be surprised. At first it might look like it hurt, but when you get used to doing that, you'll pay that card down. You're not carrying so much interest and you'll be surprised how soon it get paid off. And if you got other credit cards, then you go on to the next card and do the same thing. Um, but make sure while you're doing that technique, if you're focusing on one card, make sure you make the other minimum payments for the other credit card too. So budget that out. What do I have to do to get a Navy Federal business credit card? You have to have a Navy Federal business account. So you have to do a whole nother savings account, okay? Uh, I did that and buy me a house and truck. I'm just trying to get right for some business credit. Okay, um, well, what you can do if you're making income with your truck, there's also ways that you can, I don't know how you're receiving that money for that payment, but if you can do Stripe, also... Um, PayPal, there's other fintech companies, depending on your income, you can get a line of credit. 
So they'll look at like certain fintech companies a look at your income and they would extend you a line of credit. So that's also another way where you can get a line of credit, just um, PayPal, Stripe, just receiving sometimes payments through them. They will give you a line of credit based on your income and you can find other, um, uh, um, you can also find other companies that will give you financing, business financing based on your income. All right. All right, people, um, I want to answer one last question, Miss Mercy question. I'm also interested in buying a home for the first time. How much do I need to save to start the process? So that is a great question. If you're a first time home buyer, most likely you want to go through FHA and FHA is a federal program from the federal government that will help home buyers buy a home without using a conventional loan because the standard with a conventional loan um that's like going purely through a bank they usually want 20 percent down on the home purchase but fha is 3.5 percent so i'll give you the example for my first home um i went fha and it was, and I used that opportunity because you only have to put a small uh, down payment on that by buying a multifamily. Because usually multifamilies, uh, since it produced income, could be a little higher than a single family home to purchase. So I used that opportunity to get me a, get my hands on a multifamily. And what I did at the time, purchase a three family home. It was um, the purchasing price, one hundred and sixty nine thousand. And I had to put for a down payment with that three point uh, is three point five percent was six thousand dollars. But one thing you got to keep in mind, not only do you have to have that down payment, which for me was six thousand dollars, you do have to have the money for closing costs. And so the closing costs cost me another six thousand dollars and you have to have that check at closing and they want to see um different banks have different rules that even with the down payment and the closing cost they want to see that you have at least three months once you spend that money out of your account and pay off the cost of savings three months of savings of that mortgage that you can carry once you spend that money out of your bank account so Hopefully you can use that. It's whatever the purchasing price that you have. The down payment is going to be 3.5%. So for that, it was about 170000 I had to put about $6,000 down, but you still have to pay for closing costs. Okay, so that's like the title insurance. Um, not including, you got to get inspections. Uh, not inspect appraisals. Yeah. And also an inspection It's good to have a home inspection and you have to pay PMI, which is an insurance with, um, with FHA. It costs you cause they insure the, the loan because the government is guaranteeing the loan for the bank to encourage them to help first time home buyers. Okay. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Denise, for joining me. Nita, for joining me. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Denise. It's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. That's what that... Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm saying Credit Bureau, Protection Bureau. All right. Thank you, you guys. I really appreciate you guys joining me. We're going to... Um, I'm going to see you guys next week. I'll be... Um, God willing... Um, uh, God willing, <laughs> I'll be out, uh, on vacation. Now, uh, well, I'm going away for our, our, our anniversary slash my birthday, but I'm still going to be with y'all on that Saturday. And we're going to, um, hopefully God willing be in, um, Puerto Rico at that time. So pray for me, <laughs> you know, cause anytime with travel, uh, pray for travel and mercies. And I pray that all of you guys will be safe. So I see y'all then. Thank you so much, Nita, for the uh, 
blessed birthday in advance. I appreciate it. Oh my God, y'all. Time them went by fast this year. You just look up and just time is just uh, there. So thank you all. Thank you, Kathy. But I'm going to see y'all regardless next week. Thank you, Nancy, for the um happy birthday. And I'm dead serious. Keep me in your prayers because you know how it is traveling nowadays. I ain't had no COVID, Jesus. Lord God, I ain't had no COVID. I ain't had no COVID shot. <laughs> I've been sitting in my, my house. And far as I go, it's church and everything else. But God knows. Y'all keep me in your prayers. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone, for the happy birthday wishes. And I'll be praying for y'all that y'all have a safe week. And you're right, Kingdom Living God is good. Thank you so much. Love you guys. And I will see you guys next week. All right. Be blessed.